الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد عيو لحبة في الله continuing on in our halaqa uh, in preparation for Ramadan we reached another hadith regarding some of the rulings pertinent to Ramadan and especially this is more uh, this is to give us some knowledge about what our communities our, our leaders in our communities are doing when it comes to uh, trying to cite the moon for when the beginning of Ramadan begins and when the uh, when Ramadan uh, ends and estimating these things. This is a hadith of Ibn Umar on Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma qala sami'tu rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul idha ra'aytumuhu fasumu wa idha ra'aytumuhu faftaru faftaru fa in ghumma alaykum faqduruhu lahu mutafiqun alayhi wa li muslim fa in أُغْمِيَ عَلَيْكَمْ فَقْدُرُوهُ لَهُ فَقْدُرُوا لَهُ ثلاثين وللبخاري فأكملوا العدة ثلاثين In this hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم which you'll find in Bukhari and Muslim the hadith of Ibn Umar رضي الله تعالى عنهما May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with Umar ibn al-Khattab رضي الله تعالى عنه و Ibn Umar رضي الله تعالى عنه He said uh, Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, If you see it, then fast. And if you see it, then break your fast. And if it becomes cloudy where, where you can't uh, see, then estimate, then estimate it. And this is agreed upon in Bukhari and Muslim. And in a riwaya in Bukhari, he said, and if it is uh, becomes cloudy, then estimate for it 30. And this is uh, the riwaya in Muslim. And in the riwaya in Bukhari, in the narration of Bukhari, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Then complete uh, 30 Meaning 30 days In these uh, Riwayat of this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam <coughs> We learn many things There's a lot of fiqh here for us Many many masail come up For us but we're going to try to Make this very concise To some of the issues that arise here when it comes to citing Ramadan. And the first, in this hadith, the Prophet Wasallam is referring to seeing the Hilal or the crescent moon, the new moon. That when the new moon is observed, then, of course, then that means Ramadan is beginning. However, what do you do when the new moon is non-observable? When we cannot see the moon because of the weather conditions? And, and especially this is the case in, in uh, uh, a lot of our localities in the west and, and being inside the city and many other things, the weather conditions and so forth, which make it very difficult for us often to sight the moon. And often there's a lot of confusion. So there is a couple of nice messiah here or issues that arise up that can help us deal with our issues if we look at the fiqh and understanding of the of the ulama of this ummah and the salaf of this ummah and imams like Imam Abu Hanifa wa Imam Shafi'i wa Imam Malik wa Imam Ahmed rahimahumullah jami'an those who came before them of course the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in and the tabi'in and those who came after them one of the first issues that arises from this hadith is that in all of these ruwayat for the of these two hadith, they illustrate for us the obligation of completing Sha'ban, the month of Sha'ban, which we're in now, Thalathin Yom. Fihal istitar al hilal. So when we have uh, difficulty in observing the 
new crescent moon, that we should complete Sha'ban. These two hadith, they illustrate for us this, that when it's difficult to sight the moon, then you refer back to uh, calculating 30 days of Sha'ban. If you don't know, uh, and, and you've reached, uh, you have doubt about whether it's Ramadan the next day, it's 20, uh, the 28th day, or and you don't know if 29, it's going to be, uh, you're, you're confused about this. So in this situation, Ahabatifillah, due to the difficulty of viewing the Hilal, one of the Qawaid or a Qaida that the Ulama mentioned, and this falls under it, and this is a, a Qaida in Fiqh, and, and we've spoken about it in our Fiqh about Salat, or about Tahara especially. And this uh, Qaida is Al Yaqeen la Yazul bi Shak. And in another Qaida uh, also, Wal Asl Baqa ma kan ala ma kan. In these two Qawaid, Shari'a, the first one, Al Yaqeen la Yazul bi Shak. This means that whenever you're in doubt about something, that which is certain you should work by that which is certain. So doubtfulness does not review, does not remove certainty. So for example, in the situation that we're referring to, you are uh, in shuck in this situation if it's cloudy, you're in shuck, you're in doubt whether it's Ramadan or not, whether Ramadan is going to begin or not, because the moon wasn't sighted, you win, it's maybe the 28th day or what have you, you're looking, or the 28th, uh, 20, 20, 29th or what have you, and <clears throat> you're, you're in doubt about whether Ramadan is going to, to start or not, because you don't know, you didn't see, did, did, the moon wasn't sighted. So here, al yaqeen la yuzul bi shak. So you are certain that Sha'ban, you're still in Sha'ban. That for sure you're, you're certain. You are in the 29th day of Sha'ban, or what have you. So that you're certain of. And you have doubt about Ramadan. So in this situation, you go back to this Qaeda, this principle, and you go with that which is certain. Al yaqeen la yuzul li shak. So you have yaqeen, you are certain that it's Sha'ban, so you don't fast that next day. You do not fast, or it is not Ramadan. And the other qaida we mentioned here, Ahabatifillah, Al Asl al Baqa ma kana ala ma kan, which means that the, the origin or the. that we, we, we stay. something is not, uh, does not change from its origin. What this means for us, Ahabatifillah, is that the origin here, or the fount, or the, the asl here, is that we're in Sha'ban. Okay, and during this cloudy uh, time when you cannot see the thing. This is the asl. So, and we have confusion, again, it's far'in on the other qaida, we don't know about the uh, when Ramadan is, we don't see the Hilal. So we stay upon, we operate by that which is, uh, you know, in its original state, if you will. And that would be being on Shaban, being in the month of Shaban. And hopefully that, that is clear because, again, those kawaid, they complement one another. And as we mentioned, the, the asl, al-mutayyakin fihi baqa sha'ban. So the, the origin here is that you're certain that it is sha'ban. So, dukhul ramadan mashkuk fi. That entering ramadan, you have doubt about. So in this situation, you do not uh, 
uh, fast uh, Ramadan that next day because you have doubt about Ramadan, but you're certain about Sha'ban. Another mess of ayyur habati fillah that arises from this is that there are two uh, two signs for fasting Ramadan and for leaving Ramadan. Okay, there are two uh, this, this hadith shows us that there are two ways of calculating when Ramadan, when we enter Ramadan and when we leave Ramadan. And this is why we have to be very careful, Ahabatifillah, of some communities, they estimate uh, the month of Ramadan, they have it you know, on their calendars for years ahead of time, 10 years, 15 years in advance. They, they have it because they use some sort of uh, maybe computerized uh, way of calculating, but this is not this is not correct, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, even if it's lawful. This is a debate we leave to the ulama. But the asl is going back to these two signs for calculating Ramadan, not calculating for the next 10 years, oh, Ramadan's going to be in this day for sure, and this day for sure, because our computer program has it estimated like this, because the accuracy uh, it, it can, it can be called into question. So the first thing in, in this issue, the, the asl of determining when we begin to fast is ru'yat al-hilal, is when we see the uh, crescent moon, the new moon. When we see the hilal Ramadan, fi dukhul, and we see the halal shawal, shawal, fi khuruj. So that when we observe the crescent moon, for the holy month of Ramadan, then we begin fasting that day. You know, the next day after sighting the moon during that evening. And when we sight the next Hilal during that month of Ramadan, then we know that that's the beginning of Shawal. So that is another issue that arises from uh, this Hadith, which illustrates for us how to calculate uh, our Ramadan. The second issue, or the second way in which we know when to fast and when to break our fast, is ikmal iddata shahar thalathin yawman idha lam yura al-hilal. So this is very important. This, this is how we can determine also, as we mentioned before in the hadith, that uh, that we are, uh, that it's, it, it's time to, that we enter the month uh, of Ramadan. For example, if it's a, a cloudy and we can't see the Hilal, the way that we determine this is Ikmal Iddat uh, Shahar Thalathin Yom, is that when, uh, that we complete 30 days in the month, 30 days in the month of Sha'ban for the entrance of Ramadan, and uh, that will, or or thirty days of Ramadan, if we don't uh, see the uh, the crescent moon, and then we break our fast, then so that will hopefully uh, give us some clarity in this issue. Another mesala that arises, which is incredibly important as well, and this is why I'm spending time on this aspect of fix, just so we have a little bit more knowledge about what's going on when we see, because we have a lot of differences around the world, but especially in our communities in the West, because we don't have Muslim leaders, and we don't have, uh, we have various community organizations, some of them who claim leadership for the Muslims, but in fact, they are not really representative of the masses of Muslims. So we have various different things, people having different Eids, people at beginning Ramadan differently. I remember last year I was in America and uh, my next door neighbor said he was beginning Ramadan or he'd already fasted that day. And I was like, SubhanAllah, wow. And he said, well, you know, I fast with this community in uh, such and such city right next to us. And they, uh, you know, the Imam, they've calculated, <laughs> you know, for 10 years by computer. So we, we followed the Imam there. So, you know, he can't be blamed, but this will hopefully give us more fiqh and more understanding so we can understand these differences and we can operate by them with fiqh 
and hopefully that which is more correct, and that is by going back to the nusus of the kitab Allah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa fahim salaf al hadhi ummah. And so this mas'ala comes up here. Should we fast by the sighting of the moon in our locality or in general because the moon has been sighted somewhere? So for example, in my city, in Seattle, Washington, and I'm sure this is all over America, you have some communities, they fast, they say Saudi Arabia saw the, the, the halal and they're, they're beginning Ramadan. So we begin Ramadan. So they, they just go with Saudi okay? Other people might go with their, oh, I'm from Egypt, I'm going with Egypt. Our community is going with Egypt. And then some, they say, no, we didn't see it. We are not fasting that day. So the next day after that, we will fast. So this is where you have those, those differences and they come up. And these are not new differences, ahabati fillah. And by studying this issue, then we get clarity and we won't be so quick to blame our brothers and sisters if they, are, if they choose one of those two views. So the ulama of Islam, the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, the imams in, in the deen, they have broken from this hadith and other hadith, they have uh, went with two different uh, viewpoints with regarding this. There are two different opinions about uh, this issue, not three. The first uh, qawl, meaning that if, uh, so the first, they, they go from the, the general al-fad or left in the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا رَأَيْتُمُوهُ فُصُومُ The Prophet ﷺ said, if you see it, then fast. This is a general left. It's a general text where the Prophet ﷺ said, if you see it, meaning the halal, then fast, and he commanded. And we know that Al-Amr Yufid Al-Wujub, this is also a Qaeda Sharia, we've talked about it many times, Al-Amr Yufid Al-Wujub, that whenever we see a commandment for something in the Sharia, in the Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this illustrates for us that it is an obligation to do that. So here the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded us, <coughs> unless there's other texts to illustrate for us, <coughs> that that obligation is no, that it's mustahab or it, it is went from op, an obligation to some other ahkam in the sharia. So here the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded us if the, if the halal is, is seen, then fast. What we, we learn from this and how the ulama, they're, the way they look at this text in two different ways. The first opinion, and this is the method of the Jamhur, meaning majority of the ulama hold this view. And from them, from the majority of the ulama that hold this view, is the A'immat al-Thalatha, the three Imams like Abu Hanifa, Imam Abu Hanifa had this view, well, Imam Malik had this view, and Imam Ahmed had this view. And it is one of the views for Imam Shafi. Meaning Imam Shafi had two uh, views, as well as Imam Ahmed. There's a ruwaya on Imam Ahmed as well, with regard to the other view. But anyhow, this is the majority of opinion. This is what we need to know. This is the majority of the ulama. They hold this view that if the hilal, if the crescent moon is sighted in a country, then the Muslims everywhere should fast. So meaning if they see the moon, the crescent moon in Indonesia, if they see it in Nigeria, if they see it in Cameroon, if they see it in Seattle or wherever, then uh, if one person, if it's sighted, then this is sufficient and the whole Muslim world should fast. This is what the majority of the ulama hold this view. This is why you cannot uh, make a... a, a be mutashidded on this and say, oh my gosh, this is wrong, this is this. The majority of the ulama of Islam hold this view. Okay? Now if you have a, the knowledge to where you can uh, make a research in the issue and you, you're not comfortable with this view, you think the other view is stronger, there's no problem with that if you have knowledge or talib al-ilm or, or, or from the mashayikh or something and you take the other view, la bas, no problem. The second view with regards to this 
وهو مذهب الشافعية. This is the madhab uh, of Imam Shafi'i, and is one of the uh, views of Imam Ahmed and also Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, a great mujtahid. He also chose this view, and that is every valid, and this is the view that I tend to follow because of uh, uh, and, and believe to be most correct, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knows best because of the the dalil. There's uh, strong evidence. Uh, also supporting in addition to this text. And that is that every ballad, every place, every locality must see uh, the uh, crescent moon themselves. So, uh, you know, un unless they're in the same time zone, for example, if you're in uh, Canada and, you know, in North America, in, in Seattle or what have you, you know, a neighboring <coughs> neighboring locality, which is on the same time zone, you know, the west coast of Canada, the west coast of, of America, or what have you, and they're on the same time zone, and one of them sees that's sufficient for all of uh, that uh, that the, those the, for those countries. Okay, it is sufficient for them because they're in the same time zone. So if one sees it, then this is sufficient. However. What, what this view is saying is that if Saudi Arabia cites it, that is not sufficient for Canada or America because of the difference in the, the time zones and the, uh, and, and, you know, of seeing the, uh, observing the Hilal. So that is upon each ballot before they fast to observe the Hilal. And in regards to this, this is the second view, and I was looking for the some further evidence with regards to this. Uh, there is uh, a narration, I believe, on one of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, anyway, I can't remember if it was Ibn Abbas, <coughs> which uh, illustrates for us and Imam Manawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, and in, in one of the, he titled, entitled one of the chapters in, um, in, I believe in, in, uh, in Shara Sahih Muslim. He entitled the chapter called, Bab Bayan Anna Li Kulli Baladin Ru'yatihim. وَأَنَّهُمْ إِذَا رَاءُوا الْهِلَالِ بِبَلَدٍ لَا يَثْبُتْ حُكْمُهُ لِمَا بَعْدَ عَنْهُمْ So this is very, Imam, uh, <coughs> Imam, uh, Imam Anawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, said in his explanation of Sahih Muslim, he entitled a chapter regarding this and bringing his evidence, and it shows that his view, and also he's, uh, Imam Noe was, uh, was Shaf Shafi'i, I believe, and he, he said, he entitled the chapter called, The Chapter Which Clarifies That Every Locality, or Every City, or Every State, or what have you, should observe, you know, the sighting themselves, and that if the Hilal, the crescent moon, is observed in a in one country that is uh, that does not suffice for the ruling due to the far distance between countries. Basically, this is what it what it means. So, showing his view with regard to this, and he brings the the evidence, <coughs> and this was from the Hadith. Uh, uh, the hadith uh, of Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhumah and that Umm uh, Fadl bint Harith was sent to Muawiyah in, in Sham you know in what would be modern day Syria in this area and and he said uh, I went to uh, Sham to take care of the duties I needed to take care of. And then Ramadan uh, came upon me, and I was, a, I was in Sham. You know, Ramadan was observed. And I saw the crescent moon 
uh, the crescent moon on the on Yom Jumwa. Okay, then he came back to Medina at the end of the month, and he asked Ibn Abbas radiAllahu about this. He said, "When did you when did you see the uh, crescent moon?" For the, and then he said, "We saw it on the night of Jumwa." And then he said, "Did you see it?" He said, "Yes." Uh, and the people saw it, and so we fasted, and Muawiyah fasted. Then he said, "However, we saw it the night of uh, Saturday night." So we continue to fast until 30 days are completed or that we see it. Then he said, isn't it sufficient what Muawiyah saw and what he fasted? And Ibn Abbas said, no, this is what the Prophet Wasallam commanded us to do. So that is a very powerful uh, text there which gives us, an, it makes me inclined towards a second view, which is the view of the Shafi'iyah and the view, one of the statements of Imam Ahmed, and it's the, uh, the view or the opinion of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, is that each country or locality should see and observe the crescent moon themselves instead of fasting for some place, uh, just because it was seen in another place in another time zone. Uh, across the world, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But what we learn from this ahabatifillah is not to be very harsh with one another when it comes to differences in fiqh, in general, generally in ahkam. If there's room for disagreement, because some issues, there are room and there's sometimes there's th strong evidence for both views, that you should not take a harsh view with your brothers and sisters, but rather be more accommodating and understanding, especially if you have the knowledge to do so, and this is where knowledge opens that door of understanding for us. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.